All right then gang, so before we jump into working on the authentication process itself, I think it's best to get a basic understanding of cookies and how they work. So this video is gonna be a quick primer for cookies, but feel free to skip if you already know how to use them with Express applications. So cookies basically give us a way to store data in a user's browser. So that data could be anything we want. It could be a name, numeric values, etc. They can also be used to track your internet activity by services like Google Analytics. But how do they actually work? Well, when a request is sent to our server, we can create a cookie at that moment in time. And we can decide at that point what data the cookie will hold, as well as things like how long the cookie should last inside the browser before it expires and it's automatically deleted. So the cookie is then sent back to the browser in the server response and the browser registers it. So now that cookie is storing data inside the user's browser. Now every request the browser makes thereafter to our server, it sends whatever cookies we stored to the server with that request. And on the server, we can access it. So this process is the backbone of how we'll be authenticating users, whereby this cookie holds a JWT to identify a user. And when the server sees that, they can verify and authenticate them. Now, there is more to it than this. And like other authentication processes, there are pitfalls and things to be aware of when using cookies and JWTs, such as cross-site request forgery, whereby potentially malicious websites can essentially steal a user's authenticated status to make harmful requests to a server. Now, in our case, that risk will be low because we won't be exposing any state-changing endpoints to logged in users. So the worst thing that could happen is that we reveal hidden pages and the malicious site couldn't change any user data. But if you are creating a website with state changing endpoints for authenticated users where the data could change, then you will definitely need to research CSRF mitigation strategies and put those into place to protect your data. Now, I will leave a link to a good bit of information about this down below, and I would recommend reading that, but for the sake of our tutorial and learning about the process, since we're not gonna be exposing those endpoints, we're gonna carry on as is and continue to learn about cookies. All right then, so I'm in app.js and I've just created two dummy routes here to test out cookies. So we have one called set cookies and that is a get request and we have a get request for read cookies as well. So we're gonna use this one and visit this in a browser if we want to create a cookie and we're gonna visit this one in the browser to read the cookie. So first of all, let's set the cookie. How do we set a cookie? So imagine someone comes to this URL in a browser, at this moment in time, we want to create a cookie and register that in the browser. Well, very simple to do. All we need to do is get the response object and then use the set header method to set a header. Now, the header we want to set is the set cookie one. And the second argument here is going to be basically the cookie value. Now, the cookie value has to have a name and a value. So the name is going to be new user, and I'm going to set that equal to some kind of value like true. OK, so this is how we identify the cookie, the name of it, and this is the value of it. And this, my friends, when we send a response to the browser is now going to send this cookie along with it. So it will register that in the browser. So I can say down here, response.send, just to send some plain text, you got the cookies. All right, so I suppose that shouldn't be plural at the minute because we're just sending one, but doesn't really matter. If I save this now, I'm gonna to go to the browser and I'm gonna to go to forward slash set cookies, which is this URL over here where we set the cookie. And when we go there, we should get this response, but we should be able to then also see this cookie in the browser. So let me go here, set cookies, and we can see you got the cookies. Now, if I go to this application tab over here, then we're gonna see if we go to cookies and our local host website right here, let me just make this a bit bigger, that we have this new user cookie and the value right there is true. So this value is now being stored in the user's browser. Now, notice a couple of things here, we have this expires property and that says session and that means basically whenever i close the browser then this cookie is going to be deleted from the user's browser so if i then come to the website again and go to a different url not set cookies then i'm not going to have this in my browser however if i now just go to a different page 
on this website altogether without closing the browser, I still have this cookie. It's here for the session until I close the browser. All right. So that's how we can set a cookie. That was pretty simple, right? Now, by the way, if you go to the console, you can access the cookies inside here by saying document dot cookie. And this is how we do it from JavaScript. We use the document object and we can access that string where we have new user and that's equal to true. So we could do something with this in the code if we wanted to. All right. So that's the kind of basic way to set a cookie. However, there is an easy way to work with cookies, and that is by using a third party package called cookie parser. So what I'm going to do is install this. Let me scoot this up and open up a new terminal. Then I'm going to say npm install and it's called cookie hyphen parser like so. So I'm going to install that. Make sure it goes into your dependencies over here like this, and then we can import it or require it in this file. Now I'm going to do that right at the top over here. So I'm going to say const cookie parser. You can call it what you want. This is just a variable name, but I'm going to set it equal to require cookie hyphen parser. Okay, so this thing right here that we require, this is actually a bit of middleware. A bit like we used middleware right here to pass JSON data. We're going to use the cookie parser, make sure you spell this correctly, parser, to pass cookie data. So I'm going to say down here, app.use to use this middleware. And all we need to do is pass in this function. So cookie parser like so and invoke it. So now we've done that, we can access a cookie method on the response object. So let me show you how that works. So down here, instead of setting the cookies like this now, we're going to do it using the cookie method instead. So I can say response.cookie, like so. And if I want to give this cookie a name, it's the first argument, and that is new user. And then the second one is going to be the value, which is going to be false. And this does the same thing as this up here. OK, but it looks a little nicer. It's easier to use and it's also going to be easier to access later on when we come to read cookies. So initially this was true. Now we're creating a cookie and setting it to false. Now, what's going to happen here? Because we already have a cookie in the browser called new user. Well, if we create a cookie like this, it's going to basically look for that cookie in the browser. If it exists already, it's just going to replace it and update the value of that cookie. If it doesn't exist, it will make the cookie, right? So it currently exists, but the value over here is true. But if I now refresh, then we should see the value becomes false because now we've reset it to be false. All right. OK, so let's try making another one. I'm going to say response.cookie. And then this time we're going to create a cookie called is employee like this. And then we'll set that to be true. OK, so if I save this and come and refresh over here, then we should see in a second this one right here is employee. Let me just make this a bit bigger. And that is true. Now, there is also a third argument we can pass into this cookie method, and that is an options object. So I can pass an object right here and I can specify different properties inside this object. For example, I could say the max age and I could set in milliseconds the age of this cookie. Now remember by default the age is session so whenever we close the browser that's when the cookie gets removed. However I can override that behavior here by setting a max age of an hour or three days or whatever you prefer. So let me just paste this in and this is basically a day 1000 milliseconds times 60 seconds to get us one minute times 60 minutes to get us one hour and times 24 hours to get us one day. So this is one day in milliseconds, right? So that will be the max age of this cookie now, and it will be removed from the browser after that amount of time. Now, if I close the browser and reopen it, it's still going to be there. So it doesn't expire when the session ends. Now it only expires after this amount of time. OK, so that's the max age. What else can we do? We can do something like secure and set that to be true. Now, what does this do? This means that the cookie is only going to be sent when we have an HTTPS connection, a secure connection. Now, we don't have that at the minute, ours is HTTP by default. 
So if I was to delete this right here, this cookie, right, and save over here, if I refresh again, then I'm not going to get that cookie because this now is only going to be set over a secure connection. So let me just come over here and refresh to show you this. We don't get that second cookie. We get the first one because we don't have secure set to true on this, but this one is not set, all right? Now, let me delete that. We can also use a property called HTTP only like so and I could set that to be true and that basically means now we cannot access the cookie from the JavaScript so you know before I said documents dot cookie to get the cookie values like this and we got them now if I set this to be HTTP only it means we can't access it from the front end and they can only be transferred via the HTTP protocol so back and forth between the client and the server not in the front end JavaScript so I can demo that I'm going to save this now and I'm going to refresh over here we should get that cookie now because we took off the secure option so let me go to cookies oops this hasn't worked let me refresh and if we go to cookies, we can see is employee, that's set to true, but this thing right here now is checked, HTTP only for this cookie. So we can access this now from document.cookie like this. We don't see it in there. But if I take off this property, let me get rid of that and just keep the max age. Now, if I come over here and refresh, then hopefully we should see that this tick is not going to be there anymore. It's not. And by the way, you should see the new expiry date for this thing over here because we set that as well. But now I can say document.cookie and we're going to get both of those values is employee and new user. All right. So both of those two different properties are very important when it comes to auth. Because in production, first of all, you should only use authentication cookies over an HTTPS secure connection. And you don't want them to be accessed or modified by the client side code either. Okay. Now, for the sake of this tutorial, we're not using HTTPS, but be mindful, you should always be using an HTTPS connection for authentication purposes in production. So for now, all I'm going to do is keep the max age there. And also I'll say HTTP only to make sure it's not accessed in the front end as well and set that to true. Okay, so how do we then read the cookies? Because I said earlier, when we get cookies in the browser, if we then go to another URL, for example, just a homepage or whatever, on the server, when we receive that request, we can access the cookies. And since we're using the cookie parser up here, we can access them on the request object, much like we did on the response object right here. So I could say over here that const cookies is equal to a request dot cookies and by the way we can access this in any handler because we've used that cookie parser so any request we send to the server to any url in any handler we can access the cookies all right so now we have those cookies what i'm going to do is log them out console.log so cookies like so now, I'm also going to send a response. So response.json will send and we'll send along the cookies because that at the end of the day is just an object over here for us. It passes the cookies into an object for us. So we're just going to send that back as JSON to the browser. OK, so let me save this. And now if we go to forward slash get hyphen cookies, then hopefully this is going to work. OK, no, that didn't work. Let me refresh. Okay, not worked. Oh, that's because it's read cookies, not get cookies. Duh. Okay, read. And now we see these cookies right here, new user and is employee. And also over here, we should see logged to the console. If we go to the other terminal, these cookies right here. Now, the good thing is because this is now a JavaScript object, we can use dot notation to get the different cookies that we want to access. And we just use whatever name of the cookie we give it. So if I want to access the new user, I can say dot new user to grab that cookie. Spell this correctly. OK, save it. And now if I refresh over here, then hopefully this should work. OK, and we can see that that value is false. So then, my friends, that is the basics of how cookies works, which is nice to know when you're creating an authentication process which uses them under the hood. So next up, we're going to look at how JSON and web tokens work, which we're going to be using alongside cookies to implement our authentication system.